Welcome to the second of our videos on topology. If you haven't seen the first one yet, it's called Bagels, Bonds and Borromean Rings. You might want to check that one out. Just a quick reminder of what topology is. I've got a ball of silly putty here. Now, to a topologist, this is an object of genus zero. And if I start to squash it and make it into a pancake shape or a disc, it's still an object of genus zero in topology, providing the changes I make are smooth and continuous. I've not really changed it in the eyes of topology. Topology isn't interested in measurements or distances or angles or even shapes. It's just interested in the properties that stay the same even when I deform it like this. But if I do something a bit more dramatic and make a tear in it and form a hole, then all of a sudden topology says, aha, you've changed that object now. It's no longer genus zero. It's genus one. Think of genus as being like the number of holes. It's a bit more, it's a little bit more technical than that, but number of holes is good enough to be going on with. So now this is not the same type of object to a topologist as the ball. It's a genus one object. And if I were to pinch off a piece of this, flatten it out like that, and then make another hole. This is now a genus 2 object and again it's different. So that's one of the types of things that topology is interested in but it's more general than that. Topology is really quite a far-ranging subject and it's interested in, how can we say, it, connectivity in general. So it's interested in networks and pathways and knots. Knot theory is a whole subject within topology. So it's a very wide-ranging, many-branched subject of mathematics. But it's also a very recent subject compared with, say, arithmetic and geometry, which go back thousands of years to the Greeks, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, two, three, four, five thousand years ago. Topology, by contrast, is really quite recent. It got going in the 1700s, thanks to a brilliant and prolific Swiss mathematician called Leonard Euler. And Leonard Euler solved what is perhaps really the first problem in topology, called the Bridges of Konigsberg. And I'm going to hand over to Agnijo now, who's going to tell you about this problem and Euler's solution to it. Not only that, but some work that Euler then went on to do, which really formed the basis for the whole subject of topology. So Agnijo, over to you now on the bridges of Konigsberg. So this is a map of the city of Konigsberg in Prussia and it's situated on the river Kregel and it was very well known for its seven bridges. So you can see here, 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 here and here there were bridges. And the local townspeople came up with a problem which was could you walk across the seven bridges in such a way that you walk across all of them but you do not walk across any one bridge more than once. So many people tried this problem, none of them could actually solve it, but then Euler tried the problem and actually proved that it was actually impossible to do. So firstly he realised that yes, the exact locations of the bridge and the exact shape of 
each island and each landmass is not important. Instead, all that's important is the way that the bridges connect to them. And he actually came up with a theorem, which was that like, if each landmass has an even number of bridges, or if exactly two landmasses have an odd number of bridges, it's possible to walk across all of the bridges. And of course, this was actually the foundation of graph theory, in which, of course, the landmasses were replaced by vertices of a graph, and the edges were the bridges. But in this case, it could just be applied to the original problem. Here, this has three edges, this has three, this has three, and this has five. So, there are four landmasses with an odd number of bridges, or vertices with an odd number of edges. So, there is no path across Königsberg that crosses every bridge exactly once. Well, an interesting historical note is that in the Second World War, the Allies bombed Königsberg, which was then known as Kaliningrad in Russia. And several of the bridges were destroyed, in particular these four, and they were rebuilt into one long motorway. And in fact, if you, if you have the rule that you can pass through each part of the motorway exactly once, the new problem actually becomes solvable but only if you start in either of these two islands. Euler was also involved in another early breakthrough in topology, his discovery of what became known as the Euler characteristic, which applies to flat-sided shapes, or what we call polyhedra. You just add up the number of corners, or vertices, and faces, and take away the number of edges, and that gives you the Euler characteristic. For all regular polyhedra, like the uh, five platonic solids here, the Euler characteristic is always two. And it turns out that that makes them topologically equivalent to a sphere, which makes sense because you could take a cube, for instance, and mold it into a sphere. But there are polyhedra that have an Euler characteristic of zero. That makes them equivalent to a torus or donut shape. And there are other polyhedra that have negative values for their Euler characteristic. So, to sum up, we can look back on Euler's discovery now and see it as the first way that was found of classifying objects or surfaces in this new field of topology. So, the Euler characteristic actually has a very important relation with the number of holes of a surface. Namely that a surface with no holes, like a sphere, has an Euler characteristic of 2, whereas a surface with one hole, like a torus, has an Euler characteristic of 0. And in fact, for every additional hole you add to a surface, the Euler characteristic decreases by 2. Here's a question for you. Let's say you have a map might be a map of Europe or the United States, or it might be just a map that you've made up. What's the least number of colours you need to colour in the map so that no two adjacent regions have the same colour? Now back in 1852, a South African mathematician called Francis Guthrie was studying for his degree in England, and he was colouring in a map of the counties of England and he found that he only needed four colours to colour in all the counties so that no two that were next to one another had the same colour. And he came up with this theorem called the four colour theorem which said that this is true in general that for any map you only need four colours. The question is, was he right? So it seems simple enough to state are only four colours required for every possible map? Turns out, yes, it's a lot easier to prove that five colours are required, but to actually prove that four colours are required, you need a computer. It just hasn't been done by humans. And in fact, this was the first major proof that required computer use. So it marked an important milestone in mathematics. 
Incidentally, the four color theorem also depends on the topology. Four colors are required in the plane and also on a sphere, but different colors are required on different surfaces. So this is a Mobius band and it's colored with five colors which are red, teal, black, yellow and lilac. And in fact, the Mobius band has a five color theorem because you can see here that in this you cannot remove any color because every single region is adjacent to every single other region. So red is adjacent to lilac, yellow, black and teal. Lilac's adjacent to red, yellow, black and teal. Black's adjacent to lilac, teal, red and yellow. Yellow is adjacent to black, red, lilac and teal. And teal is adjacent to yellow, lilac, black and red. So it turns out that all of these five regions are neighbours of each other. So it's impossible to colour them using only four colours. So the Mobius band has a five colour theorem, in fact. It turns out that, in actual fact, the torus has a seven colour theorem and for another example, the pretzel shape, which is actually a triple torus, has a nine colour theorem. And topologists can work out a similar theorem for different surfaces. Topology now plays an important role in science and technology. The 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to three British researchers who used topology to explain the surprising electrical properties of thin films of superconductors. Chemists used topology to understand how some biochemicals form knotted molecules. And cosmologists have used topology in models that describe the overall shape of the universe. Thanks for watching our videos on topology. If you've got any comments then please leave them on our YouTube channel. If they're complimentary then uh, we'll be flattered by them and otherwise we'll attempt to improve in the future. Next up will be the mathematics of music. We'll be asking the question if aliens ever found our music would they understand it?